on this video we're going to create the project and set some settings so later we can focus on creating the game. When you open the engine, the project manager is the first window that pops up. From here we can create, import, remove and even run a project without having to open the editor, which is pretty cool for when you just want to play your own game sometimes. We are going to create a new project, so click new project. We have to select the path. I want it to be in this folder, so I'll hit create folder. And I'll name it blaster faster. Click OK, then open. And you'll see that the project name has taken the same name of the folder we just created. I want them both to have the same name, so I'll just click create. I'll select it and click edit and that will take us to the editor itself. When you open up a new project for the first time, this is how the editor is going to look like. I personally don't like this layout, I prefer to have the scene view all the way to the left. So I'm going to move the specter panel to this corner here. And I'll also place the file system panel along with the node panel. I use this layout all the time. And if you would like to use it often, you can save it by going to Settings, Editor Layout, and then Save Layout. You can give it a name like My Layout, and you'll always see it here. Taking a look at the File System panel, you'll see a folder named Res, which stands for Resource. And this is just the root directory of our project. By double clicking on it, you'll see that it already has an image name icon. I personally don't like to see the files as a thumbnail, I'd rather to see them as a list. And we can change that by clicking here, but that will temporarily change it. It's going to get back to the thumbnail view as soon as we start to do something else. So to have it as a list view as default, I'll go to settings, edit all settings, and on the file dialog section, I'll set display mode to list. And since we are already here, make sure that under the game window placement section, the rect property is set to center. So when we run the project, the window is right in the middle of the screen. Click close. And from now on, the file system panel will always show a list of the files by default. The next thing we will do is create a few folders that we will use throughout this course. So right click on this file and click on show in file manager. And that will open the project folder. I'm going to create a folder named sprites which is going to contain all the sprites we will use in this game. So I'll copy all of them and paste them in here. We will also need another folder named scripts that is going to contain all the scripts we create. Other one named sounds and I'll go ahead right now and copy all of the sounds in there. I'll create another folder named fonts. And here we'll have just one font named M5X7, which was made by Daniel Linsen and is free to use. I'll copy it to the font folder. And finally, we are going to use two more folders name, scenes, and the stage. Now, in Godot, pretty much everything is a scene, meaning that this entire stage is a scene as we'll expect, but also one simple object like a ship is a scene as well. Now, even though for Godot they are the same thing, for us they aren't. And for that reason, I created a scenes folder for what we know as game objects and the stages folder for stages. And since we are already here, let's change the icon of the game. In the sprites folder, I'm going to cut the icon sprite and paste it in the root folder, replacing the default one. Back to the editor, you'll see all the folders we just created. And if we go back to the project manager by going to scene, quit to project list. We now have our new icon. Back to the editor, there are still a few things we need to set up more related to the game itself. 
If you just try to run the game, it will tell you that you need to choose a main scene, which is the first scene that is going to run when the game starts. We haven't created any, so let's do it now. Go to the 2D view, and if you just try to save an empty scene by hitting Ctrl S, it won't let you because you need to have at least one node on a scene. So I'll go ahead and add one by clicking here, and I'm just going to select a simple node, hit create. I'm going to give it a generic name like word. I'll press Ctrl S, and I'll save it in the stages folder as stagegame.csn and hit save. If we try to run the project again, it will ask us to assign a main scene, let's assign the game stage. Run it again. And now we have a window running, but this size is way too big for this game, so we have to change that. And we can do so by going to scene, project settings, and under the display section, Set the width to 180 and the height to 320. We can already see a different size here. Let's run the project again. And now we have a smaller window, but this size is way too small to play, but still, we want it to be the size of the game itself. Let's take a look at this. This is what we are getting now, a window with the same size of the game view. But what we want is a window twice as big as the game view, while keeping the size of the game view at 180 by 320. And this is something very important, because if we don't keep our game view, we will have an unexpected result. For instance, here we have a ship placed at 90, 245. The game view and the window have both the same size, 180 by 320. If we made them both twice as big without keeping a fixed game view, the ship won't be at a desired position, you'll be quite offset as well as other objects on the scene. On the other hand, if we make the window bigger while keeping the size of the game view, the ship will remain its position, the game view itself is virtually the same, but now we have it twice as big and it's way more playable. Achieving this outcome in Godot is quite simple. Let's go back to the project settings. And having already defined a width and a height, we'll also set a test width and a test height, which are going to override the size of the window. So I'll set the test width to 2 times 180 and the test height to 2 times 320. Now that we have two different sizes, we need to define how the game view is going to stretch. So the stretch mode, I'll set it to 2D and the stress aspect to keep, so it keeps the dimension horizontally and vertically. Let's run the project. And we have here a bigger window and the game view remains the same. One last thing we'll change in project settings is under the section image loader. Since this is a pixel art game, we want to turn off filter a MIP map, otherwise our sprites are going to look quite blurry and we want them like this. And last but not least, under the render section, I will change the clear color to a purple value. Since I already know the value of the color, I'm just gonna type it in here. So that will be 58, 20 and 57. If we run the project, we'll see a different color here. And actually, we should also see the color in the scene view. But to see the changes, we have to reopen the editor. So I'm going to quit to project list. Open it again. And there we have it. That's gonna be it for this video. Now that we have everything set up, on the next video we will start working on the game. See you on the next one.